Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our Teaching English South Asia webinar. My name is Michelle Bambawale, and I'm a freelance consultant with the British Council in India. I'm joined by my colleague from Pakistan, Rehab, who will be recording this session. Rehab, please start the recording. We're also on Facebook Live. The theme for our discussion today is unlocking English through stories, insights, insights from South Asian educators, and is moderated by Wendy Naylor. Our teachers today are Farzana Hussain from Bangladesh, Nisar Sheikh from India, Sajini Somatunge from Sri Lanka, and Sita Gondel from Nepal. They will revis revisit themes from the British Council Global Webinar with David Heathfield, personal and creative storytelling from folk tales to our own stories with their own experiences of teaching in South Asia. I will now share a few housekeeping notes. Uh, we are also streaming live on our Teaching English Asia British Council page. To make this a safe place for everyone, please do not put any personal information, contact details or promotional messages either on Zoom or Facebook. Please be polite and considerate to others. Otherwise, moderators may remove you from the session. This is a safeguarding announcement. If there are any concerns with safeguarding, please contact these email addresses on the screen. It's very important that we engage with the session, so we encourage you to think of your questions as we go along. There will be time for questions at the end of the session. Zoom participants, you can ask the speakers questions or you can share your comments in the Facebook a live session as well. We may not have time to answer all the questions, but if you see a question that relates to you, you can put a thumbs up. So we will be able to spot popular themes. Uh, participants attending the discussion will be able to download their certificate of attendance after completing the survey at the end. It gives me great pleasure to introduce our moderator for this evening, Wendy Naylor. Wendy has worked in education for 20 years as a trainer, specializing in communication, language development, and teacher education. She has an MA in teaching English as a second language and a diploma in education and international development. Take it away, Wendy, and your panel. Thank you so much, Michelle, and thank you everyone for joining. And thank you so much for my panel that have joined with me today. We only have 60 minutes. And during this time, I want to give as much opportunity to our panelists to share their experiences of unlocking stories through English with you, the audience. So I'm going to hand over to Nisa and ask you to introduce yourself um, with just two minutes. Tell me a little bit about yourself and what's your favorite story to use with your students? Yeah, hi Wendy, thank you. Yeah, good evening everyone. I am Nisar Sheikh. I am delighted to welcome you all for this panel discussion on unlocking English through stories. I come from the western part of India, specifically known as Maharashtra. For the past 15 years, I have been teaching as a primary teacher in government Zilla Parishad schools, mostly located in the rural areas of Aurangabad district. Presently, I am teaching the young learners of class 1st to 4th grades, and the age group is about 6 to 10 years. On an average, my classroom has 30 students they are very much enthusiastic learners. Talking about the uh, one of the aspects of English language teaching, which I like most is about storytelling. Storytelling is a really a magical ability which ignites the minds of young learners, develops their creativity and imaginations and inform them while you listen. Uh, one of the sets of stories that my students and I li like in my classroom is about Panchatantra tales. Panchatantra tales are the Indian old fables which are mostly renowned for their wit and wisdom. 
in this fables the the character of animal is portrayed as a main character and the learners learn some morals at the end of the story one of such type of story has been introduced in our uh, straight curriculum textbook uh, my english book 1 where a fox and the crane uh, is the story about an uh, about uh, animal fable it is an interesting story uh, additional to these uh, traditional stories, I also like to introduce some supplementary comics materials for developing my students' reading skills. Uh, one of the most favorite uh, uh, comic stories that my learners use is a Chacha Chaudhary. Uh, Chacha Chaudhary is also famous for his wit and wisdom. And when he is on his way with his friend Sabu, they encounter various problems and Oh, I think we might have lost connection with Nisa. But I think this is, it's so wonderful to hear the different stories that you're using in the classroom. Certainly when I was learning English, the stories were yeah. very different. Thank you very yeah. much for introducing yourself and sharing with us, Nisa. Next, I would like to move to Sita. Very briefly, can you introduce yourself and again, tell us your story. And if you are tuning in, if you are attending this session, please introduce yourself and let us know what your favorite stories are in the Q&A or in the comments on Facebook. Thank you. Over Thank to you, Sita. Namaste and good afternoon, everybody. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank British Council for the great opportunity. I'm Sita Gomudil from Nepal, the country of Mount Everest. I have been teaching English in a multilingual and multicultural classroom in a rural area. I can assist students across various ages from elementary to secondary level with the class size uh, 20 to 40. In my opinion, studies offer numerous benefits to the young learners, not only young learners, to the adult learners also, they enjoy listening story and they uh, eager to listen to the teachers, they eager to learn new, new books. Uh, so they're speaking, they're listening, their reading and writing uh, ability empowers through reading stories. It helps to learner to expand new vocabularies. It engages learner uh, emotionally, enhancing retention and emotion, and it offers cultural understanding as well, and it builds confidence. It helps learner uh, grammatical structure as well. Now, <clears throat> I'm as a secondary level teacher, I enjoy teaching especially moral stories, uh, the story moral stories. Inside these stories, we can find many moral stories. Yes, among them, I enjoy baby camel and mother. No? Can you hold them closer to the camera so we can see? Oh, yes. Yeah. Thank you. And stories. your favorite story, the baby angel. camel? Yes, baby, uh, baby camel and mother. Generally, students cannot see the camel in our locality. So I enjoy teaching this animal story very much. Uh, for this, uh, for this, I have collected many uh, resources to show the students. Uh, this is this is digit animal. Yeah, mm -hmm. so they are really enthusiastic to listen uh, the story about uh, baby camel and mother. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Sita. And I think what you say about integrating skills, grammar and vocabulary, I hope yeah. we will have time to touch on that later. And I notice in all of these stories, we're really firing up students' imaginations with animals, exposure oh, yeah. to your own culture but also yeah. learning about other cultures overseas, like you yeah. say. Now we have just two minutes, Farzana. Can you tell us a little bit about your students and your background, your favorite story? Oh, you're on mute, Farzana. Assalamu alaikum and good evening. Thank you so much. British Council to uh, for choosing me for this webinar. I am Farzana Hossein. I am an assistant teacher for, uh, of a government primary school and also a facilitator. 
I have been teaching almost 25 years. Me and my students love cartoon stories, especially Mina. Uh, children love the characters Mina and especially the character of Me Too. Me Too is a bar, but uh, also acts like a wake up call with uh, uh, fun scenarios. These stories show beautifully the importance of women the, uh, uh, and teach everyone uh, for gender equality. It also uh, sometimes sends messages about health, uh, cleanliness, and natural disaster also. And the story is both fun and educational. Fantastic. And thank you for sharing that, because we see that there is so much that stories can do. We spoke a moment ago about culture, but now you're talking about public health, social issues that are coming through in playful stories that you use with your students and that they enjoy. I'd like to move us on to think about David Heathfield's webinar on creative storytelling. And we will share the chat in the link um, on, we will share the link on the chat on Facebook or in the comments on uh, the Zoom webinar. Um, but he does a lovely demonstration of personal storytelling and the different techniques that he uses to tell stories. So I recommend watching it. I loved it myself and I'm not a child. So um, I think you would have a lot of enjoyment just to dip in there and see what he did. But Fazana, I'd like to ask you, can you tell us what techniques you use when you tell stories to your students? Actually, our uh, mother tongue is Bangla. So our students at first, they use Bangla uh, to uh, tell a uh, story. But when they speak in Bangla, the story, they tell story, the Bangla, then I uh, try to help them by uh, translate it. And give, um, I use some props or some uh, materials, just like this is uh, a golden goose, a golden egg, and ah, I... I remember this story. This is in English for today with yes, class yes. three? Two, two. Class two. two. Yes. Okay. And I I make this and head, oh. I, I uh, wear it like crown. Sometimes I... Uh, make a, a, a band then uh, to, to uh, act like farmer. And uh, by acting or by using these props, I try to uh, make a, create a context and tell them story. And they uh, enjoy it very much. I can imagine. And they're really creative ways that help to translate that vocabulary, that use of props, that really will, like you say, your student's language is Bangla and you're using some Bangla and some English, but your goal is to move over to more and more English. Using props like this not only engages students, but it can really help to translate that vocabulary um, and make it memorable for them as well. So in the future, they will use more English. Um, there are so many different techniques that we can use. And I think they are uh, some that you would use in your young learner classes would be similar to what Fazana mentioned, Nisa. Do you have anything you would like to add? Yeah, that interesting to see Fazana sharing uh, uh, the various uh, uh, fables stories with their learners. Uh, for talking about my classrooms, I also like to share and use various types of techniques uh, for storytelling. And most of the important technique that I prefer to use, as I have already said, my learners are very young learners. I prefer to use animal faces, uh, uh, such as uh, this lion, 
the wolves, uh, uh-huh. the monkey, uh, most of the time monkeys. <laughs> and I also try to use uh, the uh, face mask of fruits like tomatoes, vegetables, mm-hmm. uh, bringing in all the lots of stuffs which is related, to, which are the main characters that is portrayed in the in the story. Uh, and first, initially, I start and I try to myself wear the mask of a lawyer and, and try to say, uh, like, I, I pretend to be a lawyer and, and try to say that, like, I, I am the king of the jungle. I am strong and mighty. <laughs> <laughs> no one can challenge my power in the jungle. So uh, when I when I try to pretend as an actor, uh, the more uh, the portrayed as a main character of the story, for example, in the lion and the mouse, uh, the student feel it real. The characters are real. They are they are, they can visualize the story. Uh, they are very active. They feel very engaged in the classrooms, uh, and I try to use it more frequently. In the second step, I can hear your voice. You are deeper and stronger, (laughs) like a lion, the king of the jungle. Yeah. Most preferably, after by after I have acted out the story, I in the second step, I try to give the role plays to the students where they will get more opportunity to express uh, their ideas, their imaginations, and their creativity with the help of these face marks. And I try to focus more on uh, their voice modulations where they try to bring lots of drama in it and try to use different voices for the different characters. Uh, this helps them to get more engaging with this. And, and, often and not only that, Nisa, using those different deep voices or the little mouse squeaky voice means voice. that students practice using yeah. their full range, which really helps with pronunciation and intonation. It's fantastic. Yeah, yeah definitely. And not only uh, focusing on voice modulations, but I also try to encourage uh, to use uh, the various actions and mimes, uh, walk like animals, like show the gestures of animals. So it makes them more uh, engaging. And uh, personally, in my experiences, what benefits I've experienced is that uh, the, when the learners, they are coming into the first grade, they, are, they have a very fear of English, which is taught as a third language. And when they play in such type of role play activities, they feel more confident. Uh, they get more lot of exposure of listening to English, as well as they try to develop their oral fluency, developing some sentence structures using their creativity and imaginations. So uh, these are some of lots of benefits uh, that I think uh, my learners use. Uh, other te- other techniques, <laughs> other techniques uh, that I try to use is about using pictures, uh, using lots of visuals. Back a little bit. Yeah, whether it is visible. I, unfortunately, we can't see it. But okay, sorry. So it is a, a picture of a village uh, where Priya is going for into the village. It is from class grade three, uh, and the initially I try to uh, elicit uh, the words from the pictures. What are what different words do you see from that pictures? It can be related to objects. It can be related to colors, actions places this helps them to initially speak out the little words which they know or they can use their mother tongue for uh, naming that objects from moving on from words to sentences i try to elicit by using the questions what do you think what he is doing in the picture what the old man is doing in the picture where is the things are kept uh, how we can do it and to add more additionally, to add more creativity and imagination to it, I try to focus more like open-ended questions where they can think of their own by saying, what do you think, what, what uh, the old woman is thinking, uh, what the girl will do next in the story. So in this way, trying to develop some little sentences, which gives them the confidence and building the story from their responses uh, is also one of the techniques that I try to use in my classroom. And I think some of the comments that you're saying are very relevant for young learners, those use of pictures, but that persists throughout education and throughout school. I know yeah. in terms of myself, um, I uh, often teach adults, but I rely on pictures and open-ended questions are so powerful at all different levels and all ages, because as you get older, 
you get more able to express your ideas as well. Thank you very much, Nisa. I'm going okay, to move on to um, Sita. And before I do, if you're watching, please post any questions that you have on the comments in Facebook or in the Zoom chat. Um, we welcome any questions and hopefully we'll have time at the end to answer a few of them. And now, Sita, can you talk from your perspective working with older students? Yeah, uh, thank you, Indy, for the questions. Uh, first of all, uh, we are English teacher for different level. So we have to understand the level of the students. If we go to the junior students, we have to make them more curiosity showing such charts. But when we teach history to the senior students, we have to go differently. So common techniques here I want to see it. Uh, since I'm an English teacher uh, in different cultural and different linguistic background students. While teaching uh, story, so same story I'm going to demo here. Uh, baby, camel, and mother. First of all, our intention should be specific and objective. Since our curriculum also demands the creativity, creative writing to the students, so our focus should go on there. So my always, I always think that students should be taught vocabularies. So while entering into the story, we go vocabulary truly and grammar as well. So let's focus on vocabulary for the same, uh, same story. We can see the picture first. Let's see. We can generate the enthusiasm to the students. Is it watchable? Can you see it? Not very clearly. If you sit back, maybe. Yeah. Can you see it now? Unfortunately, we can't, I'm afraid. It's okay. It's, I am showing. You can an, describe an it. Yeah. I'm showing an object to the students. And I ask them to predict what the object is about. Then, okay. They... Can you put that down? Aha. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. No, yeah. It, that's great. Yeah. 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 I create fun with these pictures before entering the poem, poem, entering the story, so that the students can think what the picture is about. How many pictures are there? It creates fun within students. Yeah. Then I go to the contextual, contextual uh, word meaning there. Some word meanings are new to the students. So I make them familiar to the word meaning of the story. Desert, you know. And then I go to their homes. You know, like this way, I teach them vocabulary so that it helps the students to learn to sketch a uh, picture of a story. This is my first activity. So I do. So your first activity focuses yeah. on teaching vocabulary <laughs> and yeah. activating their minds and then yeah. making a prediction about what yes. the story will be about. Yeah. yeah, what the story is about, how many pictures are there, uh, where are the animals found, what do yeah. they eat, like this way I ask them various questions to them. It helps to them to uh, guess what the story is about. Yeah, yeah. This and is I think my it's so story. important, yeah. it's so important that we set the stories up well. We prepare yeah. our learners well, and I can hear you do that well in your classes, Sita. What's yeah. your next step? Yeah, wait here. Yeah. And I'm, again, I, I have to teach here the adjective also. What animal is big, next is small. So I have to go, the mother is big, the baby is small. Mother is bigger, the baby is smaller. In this way, I can teach degree of adjective also. So okay. our interest, so in yeah. terms of the learning outcomes in that case, mm -hmm. you are teaching comparatives and superlatives yeah. when you're saying the yeah. mother is bigger, the baby is smaller. Yeah. And so Mama. you have a clear learning outcome, a clear reason for using that story and what you're going to teach the students, but without teaching the grammar as grammar lesson. Very nice. Continue. Yeah. Tell us more. Yeah. I do this. And my second step is that I ask a student to read the story accordingly so that they can understand 
the coherence of the uh, passage also. For that, I do the activities. I don't read the story aloud. I give more activities to the students so that they can source all the answers there, they can match, they can fill in the blanks. This is my second skill, yeah. Okay, For so example, at this point, there's yeah. focused language work, yeah? Yeah. I think yeah. many teachers with stories would use examples like fill in the blanks, yeah? Yeah, matching, mm -hmm. yeah. I do the matching there and fill in the blanks and uh, keep the sentences in correct order so that students can understand the coherence of the story. If they cannot make the coherence of the story, I sometimes use L1-2. It makes mm -hmm. them more reliable. It makes them more um, easier to understand the story. This is my second steps. Okay, yeah. so this is similar to what Faldana is saying. When you're in a monolingual classroom and you notice that the students need their L1 for support, you might use it, but your target is to use English and move towards more English in the classroom, but using L1, the first language, the mother tongue, as a resource to teach English and then switching to English. Interesting. Yeah. Thank you very and much, then, Sita. Yes. And then, yeah. then my last my last step that I say that that is uh, post reading also, you know, I give more comprehensive questions to them. And I take them either they are understanding the text or not. So I give them more comprehensive question. For example, you know, if the baby camel and mother is here, where do they live? Why camels are kept in the uh, desert? Like this way. And then at last, I give the model uh, text. For example, write a short paragraph about camel and its uh, features. If the students are able to write about the camel and its feature, why to shout by the teacher? They understand that. Okay. They understand yeah. the grammar. They understand the uh, other grammatical structure given by the text. It helps Thank you. understand the reading skill and writing skill and then grammar, then vocabulary. In this way, I use a uh, story in my classroom. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Sita. Um, and we have like a comprehensive pre-reading or pre-listening, yeah, pre-storytelling, yeah. during the storytelling and the ending. I am yeah. delighted that our fourth speaker, Sajani, has been able to join us. Um, Sajani, uh, could you very briefly introduce yourself? Are you working in a rural or an urban area? Um, and then if you would like to, yeah, please introduce uh, yourself. Thank you, Andy. I think uh, you can hear me properly. Yes. Okay. Sorry, my camera is not working today. That I'm not happy about that. But anyway, yes, I'm a teacher. I'm from Sri Lanka. Um, I'm not only a teacher, I'm a teacher trainer as well. And I'm working in a semi-urban school. And in my classes, there are around 45 students normally. I'm teaching to students of second level. My students are from uh, 14 years to 15 years to 18 years. That's a big range there. So they are not small kids that I'm teaching, some grown-up students. And my favorites are from uh, the Sri Lankan folk tales. So they enjoy very much. They are familiar to my students. So because of that, and I'm also familiar with them, and it's easy for me to bring out, uh, bring, the, uh, bring them uh, stories at any stage in the lesson. So I use them often. Fantastic. And it's interesting to hear that you're teaching 18 year olds and they are still engaged and enjoying stories and able to use stories in their learning. Um, if we think about uh, the webinar that David Heathfield gave on the personal and creative storytelling, again, we'll put the link in the chat. One thing that he focused on, and I know you do some very interesting things in your classroom, was about what you do after you have told a story with your learners. Keeping in mind your learners are older, I'd be really fascinated to know 
um, what kind of things your students enjoy doing after you tell a story, Sajani? Uh, yes, Wendy, uh, in my classes from uh, grade 9 to grade 12, that means 15 to 18, all of them enjoy doing, I mean, I get them to change the setting of the story. That means I ask them to change the time and the characters, the places, and make their own, I mean, uh, make a new story upon what they have already heard. So they, uh, firstly, they uh, do it in uh, individually and in pairs, and I make them and snowballing uh, method, I make them into fours and share. And in the groups, they select the best, and out of the best, they prepare a new, I think, uh, I mean, uh, taking all the best, uh, uh, best items that they had heard. So they select uh, the new components and make a new story in fours, groups of four. So they are so they are related to their own experiences. Uh, they create that. That's uh, really funny with the uh, grade 12 students, grade, I mean, uh, students of uh, uh, 18 years old. So, and uh, one other technique I do is I stop the story halfway. Thereafter, I get them to build up the story in a chain. So everybody shares one bit. So after every three responses, I uh, ask them to repeat what, what's done and what would uh, happen next. So likewise, it's going on. So they remember by the end, they can build up the sto whole story together. And thereafter, what they do is they write the story. So for writing the story, I make them as a, a group work, uh, especially. Uh, and sometimes uh, I get them to do it as pairs as well. Now, but I'm not getting them to write them individually, really, because it takes time. And uh, because I, I always believe two heads or more heads are better than one head. So because of that, they enjoy doing uh, col collaborative learning is more fun. And uh, especially when they are sharing, because I sometimes ask, uh, in, in the stories if they have some similar experiences related to them and halfway sometimes they disturb me and they tell me teacher so something like that happened in our village as well that happened to a friend of mine as well so I get them into uh, small groups and to share their own such stories as well so that's also really funny and they learn by they are they are speaking and they are listening as well and especially uh, when they have uh, just like uh, david hitfield uh, said uh, when they find that they are a listener for them and when they find there are some i mean uh, uh, some recognition for them they feel that their worth is there in the classroom as well so almost everybody uh, find it a good opportunity to engage in and uh, sometimes my students so are not can I stop with... you for one second you were saying yeah, sure. that you stop in the middle of a story and I yeah. noticed in the uh, chat somebody was asking why should we or what's the diff the problem with stopping to ask questions when we're telling stories um can you uh perhaps elaborate a little bit on why you would only stop once or how many times you would stop in a 10 minute story? Um, when do you decide to break up the story and why do you decide to do it? Uh, uh, stop, uh, uh, stopping in the sense, I do it uh, in uh, several ways. What I said was that I stop the story to build the story by themselves uh, as a chain story. So that's one technique that I do. And so the as... chain story means that yeah. one student continues and then they pass to yeah. the next student. Yeah, and so like... it's good to stop in the story because it means yeah. that the teacher stops talking and then the students start talking. Yes. If you Funny. plan that activity well. Yeah, yeah. Nice. and uh, just as uh, the one who asked the question, sometimes in my stories as well, I stop halfway, halfway in the sense when there are some turning points, some, uh, I mean, some uh, points there that uh, suspension is there. So I stop and ask, and sometimes when, if my target is uh, language, grammar, I mean, a tense, sometimes I ask questions, what happened? Uh, what did he say? Uh, what did he say? then uh, what would happen next? Likewise, so to point grammar as well, I ask questions, stop and ask questions. So different, uh, I mean, uh, different ways I use stopping my stories. I hope I answered the question. 
Yeah, no, very nice. And I think what I hear is how you use stories, not just as a tool to tell students, but in this case, this is an opportunity for students to be creative and be imaginative in the ways that they um, use stories. Yeah, um, Wendy, and sometimes I get them off at the end of the stories, I get them to have some debates as well. I divide the students into two groups, the class, and uh, get them uh, out of the moral or out of the issue. Social issues sometimes are discussed. I get them to discuss them and debate over that. Uh, in that cases, I use the fishbowl method where there are two circles. So the inner circle students will be discussing over that, debating over that, and the outer circle will be getting notes. And later on, they will change seats and they will come to the inner seats and they will continue the debates. So that's one other technique that I do after post activity and that's very yeah. interesting and I'm just seeing in the chat that Ramya uh, Sirinivasan um, is describing what you call the chain story as spinning the yarn where one starts, ah, yes, starts exactly. telling it and it's such yeah. a lovely way to describe the storytelling as spinning the yarn um, <laughs> I would like to move to look at some of the questions um, that have come up in the chat. Um, I have one question here, um, which I think will be close to Nisa's heart. What is the importance of song while telling the story? And this comes from Shayam Suresh Giri. Thank you for your question. And Nisa, what is the importance of song while telling a story? Yeah, uh, very interesting questions. And I think it is very important when you're considering the young learners. Uh, songs can play a very important aspect in, uh, the, in telling the stories to very young learners. Uh, in my experience of, uh, of my classrooms, I definitely use some of the short rhymes or action songs to introduce some of the vocabularies of the uh, of the stories uh, it i frequently try to use the techniques of tpr where total physical response where the students are uh, getting the opportunity to uh, participate actively use their body parts uh, have, because they are more enthusiastic uh, they are very energetic and they participate with that action song uh, and it helps to them to revise uh, the new vocabulary that has been introduced into the storytelling. Uh, they can go through that uh, new vocabulary with the help of this TPR songs. And as a teacher, then we can introduce the story. So I think uh, songs play an important role in storytelling. Yes. And for me, I remember at school, um, we used to have drills and this was one of the great things for young learners and old learners but one of the example stories i can think of is about uh, the three little pigs and the big bad wolf and he goes to the houses of the three little pigs and as a child i was taught i'll huff and i'll puff and i'll <laughs> blow your house down and because the big bad wolf went to three little pigs' houses, I said this three times every time that story was told and retold. And so that repetition helps with the vocabulary drill. I think the yes. point that you make about TPR um, and the way that we use uh, the drills and the songs is really um, also useful for teachers because you learn to huff and you learn to huff and by acting and using TPR, you can see if the students have some idea what the words mean that they are saying. Another question that I think is very interesting, which would stand out for a lot of um our students, our listeners, was about teaching critical thinking skills. 
um, using stories. And I'm going to hand this over um, to Sajani. Um, as you have um, older students in your class, and therefore I imagine you might uh, come across um, opportunities to develop critical questioning skills among your students, critical thinking skills, critical questioning skills. And thank you, Ranjani Shankar, for this question. Sajani, over to you. Yeah, thank you, Wendy, and uh, thank you, Ranjana. I'm sorry if I mis uh, mispronounce your name, uh, but it's uh, quite an uh, interesting question, really, because uh, stories can develop critical thinking of the students because always they are curious on what would happen. If I were there, if that happened to me, how would I react? So if, that, uh, if some other thing happened, how would she or how would that person react? So that's uh, some uh, questions that I pose to my students, especially grade 12 students. Uh, in groups, they discuss if the question is posed on, if the if the issue was changed, if the setting was changed, how what uh, what other opportunities, what other options would be there, how she would react. So there, there's a lot of opportunities for them to think about. So they are in groups, they discuss, and sometimes what arguments also that, uh, that are made, uh, because uh, sometimes they 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 argue within themselves as a no no this is not the way that uh, the some other way that way she would react likewise so sometimes i give uh, give them preference line uh, line activities as well to come up with such uh, opinions what would happen next if uh, if they were there if the setting was changed if the issue was changed how they can change the issue if uh, they were there in power if they're in the authority or if they were in the scene so likewise so that because it's a really good uh, opportunity for them to uh, that uh, i mean uh, uh, open up their eyes because uh, i found uh, uh, at the beginning, my students were not that, they are creative anyway, but anyway, when uh, I asked them to uh, think uh, creatively, they they didn't come up uh, much creatively. But anyway, when I used these stories and go, got them uh, to answer such questions, they really, they could, uh, I mean, use their imagination and through their imagination, they could create new answers. And uh, uh, it's really uh, very helpful to develop thoughts, I mean, higher order thinking skills uh, within the students. Yeah, and I think uh, what you speak about on the one hand is developing empathy and understanding for other people. And then on the other hand, when you're thinking about what would you do if you had the power to change something in that story, then you are focusing on about issues of social justice, issues of environmental concerns. And exactly. very briefly, I want to jump to Farzana, who's in the primary classroom, but I remember you saying that you particularly like the MENA stories in the way that it addresses um, social issues and public health issues. Um, how do you help students zoom in on those subjects um, when you're using those stories in your classroom, when you're talking about the MENA stories with your students? Thank you, Wendy. <clears throat> when I ask uh, my students, uh, uh, is there, uh, is they face any uh, difference between his or her uh, brother, sister, uh, uh, telling the story from Mina and Raju. Uh, there is a story from Mina uh, there. Raju eats uh, full egg and Mina just a half, she eats just half egg. So, and, uh, but, uh, uh, her teacher um, uh, tried to describe that um, Bo, uh, Raju and Mina are the same. They are not, uh, Raju is not superior than Mina and they are equal. For, from these, uh, I can uh, uh, tol tell them and they also uh, come, 
after this storytelling, they also try to uh, ask if their uh, father or mother do this or not, just like this. Okay, so you are working with younger learners, you're using the stories and the animals and those morals as metaphors. And again, a similar process, but a different response that you would expect from younger learners compared to if you were in charge, if you were the government, what would you expect to happen as Sajani is asking in her classroom? And it's good to think about uh, the range of things our learners can relate to. I have another question about the use of technology in telling stories. And if you have the opportunity, I strongly recommend watching um, David Heathfield's uh, webinar because he recommends that storytelling in our classrooms is an opportunity to put the screens and put the technology away. The art of storytelling, he suggests, is about human to human contact and about bringing stories to life and expressing it with a connection between the audience or the student and the teacher and giving the students the opportunity to share their personal stories with each other. So he suggests that technology is not very um, necessarily useful in telling stories. Um, Sita, I know that you're in a very rural area and therefore technology will be uh, challenging for you. Would you like to add anything um, about technology and storytelling? Yeah, uh, essentially uh, teaching a story, what types of story are we going to teach? We have to be clear about it. If uh, we are going to teach very short story, we can make... Oh, Sita, you've got on to mute. What we said before, if we are going to teach very short story, I, I'm disturbed. We can make that uh, uh, just you said the example before uh, the story event. For example, mother may ask some question. This is the question asked by the baby camel. Then mother replied, sure. In this way, we can tease for the very short story. So students can listen us very curiously. If we are ready to teach very long story at that time it's very difficult to modulate the tone module then our uh, our pace of the story it's very difficult to tease so according to the stories passage we have to go through that for short story we can do everything for long story it's very difficult uh, to do that activity just you shared before so we have to engage students in and that way i think so yeah, I think keeping that engagement between the teacher and the student yeah. is so important. Yeah. And thank you, thank you, Shyam Suresh Giri Giri for the question. Um, I'm going to move on to, um, I think a tricky question that some student or some teachers um, have doubts about using stories in their class. Um, because um, like Antara Nandi asks is, can you elaborate on the aims to be kept in mind while using storytelling techniques for senior secondary students? And I saw another question in the chat about um, how you can use stories when you are focusing on uh, exams and what is the benefit of stories when it comes to exams. I'm gonna pass this to Sajani, as I imagine that you come into contact with end of school exams as part of your work. Yeah, uh, thank you, Wendy. Uh, that's a really nice uh, question. Uh, when uh, teaching uh, stories, uh, using stories with uh, senior secondary students, really some things that we have to keep in our minds because they, they are age. 
the, they are like ins are not the like ins of uh, the small kids so uh, they are much towards a bit of romance if we have a touch in our stories they like it very much if there are some stories about girls and boys and a bit of romance and something uh, taking place so they love it and they easily get into that and the other thing is that we are not to go on uh, in detail much because they lose their interest uh, very easily unlike the small kids so then uh, we'll have to think about exactly what we are telling them and their interests their mood and the time of the day as well because uh, normally a level students uh, they are uh, running after their heavy heavy syllabuses so they are we have to think about what they are doing so in english supports them to uh, they are in their higher education as well so what we are doing is uh, developing their speaking skills then uh, writing skills especially and they are again uh, reading as well so thinking about them we have to plan our lessons so they are think what we are the content and the context as well and the time in as well and the duration of the story that's why i sometimes i uh, stop halfway and get them to uh, go on uh, spin their eye okay so that's uh, one technique that i get them to keep up uh, keep up the interest and the other question uh, what the use of uh, having stories when there are exams at hand now in sri lanka in uh, all level exam ordinary level exam uh, uh, the last question the essay question one type of question is uh, developing a story the story head, uh, the beginning is given so they will have to create elaborate that and develop their own story so this gives them uh, the authentic experience for them to uh, develop their own creativity so think about how to uh, develop a story go on uh, developing uh, one uh, when uh, when their thesis statement is given so how to develop that and uh, and the other thing is that i think for them now uh, they are going to they, they are stepping out of the school uh, soon so they need to uh, face the real society so they find real characters real issues in such stories so that's a good experience for them they, because they find these stories these characters these issues in uh, their real life as well because they in our schools in sri lanka they don't have much time to uh, be engaged in uh, much entertainment because their syllabus uh, syllabi are uh, heavy uh, especially in a level classes mm -hmm. so they are much engaged on focused on their uh, the content uh, subjects so in yeah. in that case so this the, the stories gives them stuff uh, to the authentic real life to live with them and uh, bring the experience to them uh, to develop their english so i think the point that um you make is really that when you're selecting stories think about what your students need to do in the exam so the example that sita gave of the baby giraffe, the baby camel and the mother camel. Um, and she spoke about comparatives and superlatives. And if this is part of your syllabus, then the story is going to help you to teach the syllabus. If it's part of the exam, that story will give them the exposure to the grammar in a natural way that then they can explore later in more depth. Um, when they do language work based on the story. But really importantly, the story helps students to relax and choosing the story um, to match your students' interest and engage your students means that when you're teaching uh, the issues or the target language that is on the exam, your students will be more open if they feel relaxed and calm and engaged in the class compared to uh, if you are teaching them grammar or vocabulary. Um, yeah, there are a couple yeah. of other points and I want to just bring out uh, this uh, question from Prakash Chandra Kassara. Um, and I think you phrase this as a question, but I think it's a really um, nice comment as well. Um, a child comes in school with culture of home and community. And how can we address cultures of the various students in our classroom through storytelling? I think 
This is actually the answer is in the question. And you're making a really um, important point about the power of stories to help us relate um, students from uh, different cultures, to help them to relate to each other, to help them to understand um, their different backgrounds, to understand where um, the conditions um, where other students live. And through the techniques that have already been mentioned, using imagination, using prediction and questioning techniques, we can really create um, more understanding and equality in the classroom through our use of stories. Um, so thank you very much for that, Prakash Chandra Kasera. Um, I also have a question directly to me from Basma Batul, um, who is asking, um, if I'm also a teacher, do I use the same techniques as what we are sharing? And the answer is yes. And at all levels, if it's looking at the newspaper, with adult students or teachers in development and trying to predict what the story is based on the headline, just the same as Sita is doing when she is showing the pictures to her students of the camel based on the moral stories that she uses in her class. Or if it comes to reading a story and thinking, what can I teach my students based on this story? Can I teach them adjectives? What can I extrapolate or uh, focus on in terms of vocabulary or grammar? What's my learning aim? <laughs> or moving to examples that Sajani gave about being creative after you uh, tell the story. So, stopping the story and asking students to write an ending to it. And I use this technique in different ways with different stories, with different content and all different age levels. So absolutely. And thank you for your question, Basma Batul. So we are running short of time now. And I would like to say a big thank you to the panel for sharing your ideas, your experiences in the classroom. Um, I think it's very clear that stories have a place in our classrooms as a way to celebrate culture, a way to explore language, whether it be grammar, vocabulary, a way to think about critical thinking skills and a way to really engage um, our learners and the different techniques that we use um, inspire our students creativity and imagination um, so thank you for sharing all of that with us um, we will post the webinar from David Heathfield for you to enjoy um, the recording is available on YouTube um, and then I would like to um, pass over to my colleague, Michelle, who will explain the next steps after this webinar today. So Michelle will be joining us to explain how you can uh, get your certificate. You can see the instructions written on the slide here. Um, uh, here, can you hear me, uh, Wendy? Yes, we can, okay. Michelle, Th thank you. Thanks so much, Wendy, Farzana, Nisar, Sita, and Sajini. I learned a lot about storytelling. Yep. Uh, we've been posting the links in the chat box uh, on Zoom and on Facebook for David Heathcliff's uh, webinar. Uh, I, we've also posted the links in the chat box for the feedback form. Uh, please fill in the feedback form. After you fill in the feedback form, you will get an email 
with your certificate. And the certificate, uh, please download it. It's an editable PDF. Uh, you can edit the PDF and change where it says name, surname, type your own name and surname and save it. Uh, so once you fill in the feedback form, you will get the certificate. Uh, thank you again to our panelists. And uh, we look forward to seeing you again. Uh, for our next Teaching English South Asia regional webinar. Uh, it's called Creating a Safe, Inclusing, Inclusive Learning Environment. Uh, it will be on Thursday, the 4th of July. Uh, thanks again, everyone. And please click on the link in the chat box for your certificate. Thank you very much, Michelle. And thanks again to our panel and for everyone for joining. Thank you, Windy ma'am, Mitchell ma'am, Sujata ma'am, all my dear panelists. Thank you for providing this opportunity. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks.